Okay, so we ended off at uh, Juno approaching Aeolus, trying to bribe him with her most beautiful nymph, uh, Deopia. And we ended right about here. Oops, did my tinkle? Okay. So then Aeolus responds in answer thus, or responds these things. Oh, queen, <clears throat> um, whatever you want, it is your duty to explore. In other words, whatever you want, oh queen, it's your, it's your job to just say what you want. Uh, for me, it is right to carry out your orders. You, <clears throat> um, you, you obtain for me whatever ever kingdom this is. Um, you obtain for me the scepter and Jove. And by metonymy, the scepter here is just power, being uh, king of the winds. So you obtain for me the scepter and Jove or Jupiter, meaning you're the one who got Jupiter on my side. Um, <clears throat> you allow me to recline at the dining tables of the gods. You make me, there's an understood may in there, powerful, or the power, the power, you give me the power of the clouds and of the storms. So he's really trying to ingratiate himself with, with Juno, saying, you're the one who got me this job of being king of the winds, which is totally untrue. Okay. Did it again. So, <clears throat> having said these things, or, um, sorry, these words having been spoken, it's uh, a missing whereby here. These words having been spoken, he struck onto the side, um, onto the side of the mountain with his with his with his scepter having been or with the sharp point of the scepter having been turned over he hit onto the side um, the hollow mountain so this is to say that here's the mountain and Aeolus takes his scepter and he turns it over to where there's a point and he starts banging on the on the mountain to wake the winds up. So conversa cuspide is either an ablative of means or an ablative absolute. So you should notice this word uh, cuspide, cuspis, cuspidus, like um, like your bicuspid, a sharp point on your tooth. So he pounds the mountain with his uh, scepter having been turned over, and the winds, uh, just as with a battle line having been drawn up. So, in, in other words, sort of a row of soldiers, a column of soldiers. The winds, through the, the, the door having been made, they rush and they blow through the lands in a whirlwind. A little ablative of manner there, probably. In Kubuera Mari. This is a third person plural perfect, shortened. So, they brood over the seas. And if you remember from your vocabulary, this verb in incubo takes the dative. So that's why Mari is a dative. So it's like they lie over, they brood over the seas. And what's this? Okay. <coughs> and <coughs> And they rush. So these are all the winds that are coming out. There's Eurus and Notus and Africus. Um, all of them, they rush out all together from the lowest depths. And it's probably coming out of the lowest depths of the cave. 
they rush. Um, and kriber means thick or crowded, crowded with wind blasts or wind gusts. And that's specifically modifying Africus, but it can go with all of them. <clears throat> so all together, thick with wind gusts, Eurus and Notus and Africus, they all rush out from the depths of the cave. And to hear this line out loud, you'll notice a lot of you'll notice a lot of S alliteration. The Eurus qua Notus qua Ruin Kreber qua Prokelis Africus. And they get a lot of a lot of C, a lot of hard C sounds to to uh, to sound like the the rushing and creaking of winds coming out of a cave, <coughs> and they turn or they rush uh, to the shore. They turn large waves towards the shores. So as they come out of the cave, they're making now the water become these big waves. So they turn great waves to the shores. Okay. Clamor qua stridor qua rum rudentum in sequitur. So here we have two separate subjects, but notice that your verb is singular. You can attach each one of these verbs to the singular, or each one of these subjects to the singular verb if you want. And notice also we have a qua qua, so both and. Um, actually, we had that up here, but I didn't say it. So both Eurus and Notus and Africus. Now on line 87, uh, a, a clamor of the men, like a shouting of the men follows, and a creaking of ropes follows. And so this creaking of ropes uh, may be the ropes from the cave of the winds, or it could be the creaking of the the ropes from the sh from the ships. And this is actually probably about Aeneas's ship, and we see him for the first time here. Suddenly, <coughs> the uh, the clouds um, move away. Um, actually, oh yeah, the suddenly the clouds take away both the sky and the day. So the winds have brought in these clouds, and so it's taking away the sky and the day. <coughs> um, oh, they take away the, both the sky and the day from the eyes of the Trojans. And this is where we see the Trojans and Aeneas for the first time. And here's this verb in Kubo again, to brood over or lay over. So the dark night broods over or lies over or covers the sea. And again, this verb in Kubo takes the dative, so that's why pontoons dative. So now there's night that's over the water, there are waves, it's dark, uh, dark and scary. Uh, the poli are the skies, the, um, the poles of the skies, you can just say skies. And there's another third person plural, perfect. The skies resounded, and the upper air flashes with frequent fire. Here's this word kreber, kreber again, that we had to describe uh, Africus just a few lines above. So the, the, the sky flashes with, with frequent fires, in other words, lightning. <coughs> And everything, uh, intentant is um, brings or carries towards, um, so brings presentem mortem, um, imminent death to the men. So everything brings presentem mortem to the men. Okay, here's our hero Aeneas. <laughs> our hero, when we see him for the first time, Oops, and look what he's doing. <laughs> um, immediately, let's go to, let's go to purple for Aeneas. Uh, immediately the limbs of Aeneas are, are loosened with cold. I know that doesn't make any sense. Usually cold 
means more of a stiffness, but they are loosened with cold or with fear. He groans. <laughs> and he says such things with his voice. Um, he holding his hands, his palms, literally the his little hands, <laughs> holding his hands, um, his double hands, duplete keys is a long IS accusative plural, holding double hands or both of his hands to the stars. And remember that sidera comes from sidus, sideris, and it's neuter, so that's why it's ad sidera. Oh, three, oh, three and four times happy or blessed are those who um, who managed um, who managed to, to touch death um, come to get a petera who managed to touch death or just in other words who managed to die in front of the faces of their fathers under the high walls of Troy so he proclaims how lucky those people who died at Troy are so that's a really great way to open up our introduction to our hero, wishing he had died at Troy. Oh, Tidius, <laughs> Tidides, um, the most brave of the race of the Greeks. And this is referring to Achilles. <coughs> um, Here's Dana'um, which is short for Dana'orum. Um, um, up, up above when we had Juno sing, um, may, oh, I forget what it was, am I supposed to stop my attempts? Am I supposed to, in this kind of exclamation, we have the same thing where Aeneas is doing that. So the may is actually the subject, and the potuus is the verb. So <coughs> he says, should I not have been able to die on Trojan fields? Um. Mm -hmm. um, and should uh, let's see. Mm. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so why was I not able to die? Why was I not uh, able to die on Trojan plains? Uh, why was I not able to pour out my life uh, to a dextra by your right hand? And again, he's talking to Achilles. <clears throat> where, where Hector lies, lies, he's talking about the Trojan fields, because of the spear or the weapon of Ayakidai, the uh, descendant of Ayakus. And the descendant of Ayakus is Achilles. Oops. <clears throat> Uh, where now huge Sarpedon lies um, with the <coughs> um, where the Simois, which is a river in Troy, where the Simois turns up the scuta corrupta and the galias and the corpora of men. So where the similes turns up or moves the shields having been snatched up, the, the helmets and the brave bodies of men beneath the waves. So this is Aeneas' lament. Aeneas is lamented about why he wasn't able to die. Okay, this is not working. <clears throat> okay. 
Ah! I just do. Okay. So, uh, a wind blast, um, creaking with a Kuro, one of the winds, <clears throat> um, blasts the, blasts the, the sail, um, in the other direction. And it's the sail of the Date of possession, Yaktanti Talia. So the person who's Yaktans, who's shouting such things, is Aeneas. So now Yaktanti is just the date of Yaktans, Yaktantis, Yaktanti. And it's just a date of possession. So to the one shouting these things. In other words, there's a horse to Marcus. Um, the, uh, a wind blast strikes the sail of the one shouting these things. Yaktanti <clears throat> Tali. And this wind blast um, raises the waves. This is a long U.S. accusative plural. Lifts the waves to the stars. Um, obvious hyperbole here. The oars are broken. Then the the prow turns aside, and the boat gives its side to the waves. So the whole boat is just turning and being crashed by the waves. Praeruptus mons aquae in sequitur. So um, uh, a sheer mountain of water follows in a mass, in a heap. It's probably a, an ablative of manner. Praeruptus mons aquae. Yeah, it just means a sheer wall of water. A huge wave. Um, he pendant. So he is, is represents um, like weary. Men here. These men. These men hang from the top of the wave. I always imagine a, a huge wave like this. And come on, Pen. And the, like little guys hanging off the the edge of this wave. Ah. Okay, so these are the weary pendant sumo. <clears throat> a wave gaping open. Uh, he, the he skins. Uh, a, a, like a, a large open wave um, shows the land in beneath or uh, uh, beneath the other waves. So it's sort of like the. Um, the waves, the water has opened up to the point where you can actually see the ground underneath. So, again, it's the wave gaping open. Uh, into reveals, for a parrot, reveals the land between the waves. So if you look down, sort of like parting of the Red Sea, you just look down, you can see the, the land and the starfish and all kinds of sea creatures underneath here. Uh, Oysters is another word for a swirling, um, a swirling wave um, strikes the sands, <laughs> or strikes them with sands, sorry. The notus, I forget which wind that is, north wind, south wind, I forgot. The, the notus wind um, twists, trees. Abreptas. Uh, this trees is standing for Nawis ships. So Motus twists three ships having been snatched into the um, into the hiding rocks. Um, and a little side note in case you want to know what those rocks are, the Italians call those rocks that are in the middle of the waves. The Italians call them the altars. Uh, 
where a huge um, dorsum is like a, a literally a back, but a, it's like a mountain ridge that's just peeking out over the water. And the ships crash into them. It's a huge ridge in the uh, very top of the water. Um, now we're going back to three more boats, so you can supply a Nawis here. Eurus uh, forces or compels three boats from the depths into the shallows and into the sand banks. And Syrtis is actually a name of a, a region in North Africa. Um, pitiful to behold. This is a really nice ablative in uh, a supine in you. Mirabile, Risu, Horribile, Dictu, all of those little horrible to behold, um, horrible to see. And uh, Euros, we're still there, um, crashes the boats into the uh, shallow water and surrounds them. We're still with Nawes, Nawes and surrounds them with a ditch of sand. So now the ships are either being crushed up in the sea or they're being pushed to the, to the shore. Okay, you know, so one of those boats, so let's put a null in here. Now it's a direct object, so we're gonna wait and just find the verb here. Okay, oh, okay here, so here's the subject and verb. Pontus ferret. Okay, a wave crashes or smashes or strikes one boat on its poop deck. Um, well, which boat do you ask? Well, the boat which, which was carrying the Lycians and faithful Orontes. Um, so this, this sea, this wave strikes one boat on its poop deck in front of the eyes of him himself, and it may be referring to Aeneas, in front of the eyes of Aeneas himself, um, and it's an ingens pontu, so it's a huge wave. Um, all vertice is from above. Uh, okay. The magister of this one boat is just the captain of this ship. It's not Aeneas, but just some other captain guy. The, the captain is shaken or thrown out, pronus, headlong, and he is turned onto his head. So he's just thrown out of the boat. So a minute ago we had Unam, one boat. Now we have Elam, that one. So we've got this one and that one. So that one, that Nawis, or actually it's accusative, okay. Um, three times uh, a wave twists to that one. Um, three times drag. Ah, uh, what did I just do? Okay, dragging it into a circle. So the agens, curcum, is just a participle describing this fluctus. So there's a wave, a boat that's crashed over here. This boat is being spun in a in a Come on, Pen. Okay. This boat is being spun three times around. Ibidem means in the same place. And if you guys knew anymore what it was like to make bibliographies, you would know that Ibidem in the same place is abbreviated IBID or Ibid. When uh, back in the old days, we had to do bibliographies to show where we got things in our papers. And Ibid was um, if you had already quoted a book. <coughs> Okay. Come on. Where aren't you going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, now we're still with this this boat over here. And a rapidus vortex. So this is a um, sort of like a funnel or a um, a cyclone within the water swallows it up into the sea. What was that? Okay. 
Wally is a substantive that's standing in for weary. And it means uh, Wally is scattered. So men scattered, uh, swimming men scattered, nantes is just the present or participle of nonae, appear in the huge whirlpool. So if you s imagine this whirlpool, you see all these, these men just appearing. Help, help, help. The weapons of the men's, of the men's, <laughs> the weapons of the men, the tabulae are planks of the ships, and Trojan treasures, all of them, apparent, appear in the waves. So all through the water you see um, men, you see planks of boats, you see weapons floating around, um, which is impossible, unless the weapons are made out of wood. Okay. Right? More about the boats. Here's Heams, we get. And from Caesar, you guys should remember that Heams is the winter or here a winter storm. The the winter storm uh, strikes the strong boat of Ilioneus, and it's important you know who Ilioneus is. We're gonna see him later. So a strong winter winter gust or winter storm strikes um, the strong boat of Ilioneus. Uh, now also the boat of brave Achates, and also the one in which Abbas was carried, and the one in which old Alides was carried. So there are four boats here that this hymns. Um, strikes. Okay. All of the boats accept or take on unfriendly water with the uh, uh, with the fastenings of the sides having been loosened. So it means the side structure of the boat of the boats having been loosened. So compagibus loxis. So with the side fastenings, sorry, with the, with the fastenings of the sides having been loosened, all of the boats take on unfriendly water, and uh, they, oh, I forgot what Fati, Fati's going to meant. Um, and they, I think it's like take on um, water in the, in the cracks. I had this really nice alliterative line earlier, the Magno Memore Pontum. So meanwhile, Neptune, yay! So remember, this is Neptune's realm that Juno and Aeolus have, have sort of uh, taken over. So now Neptune realizes that something's going on in his realm, and he's not very happy about it. So Neptune... Uh, sensed, meanwhile, this is an indirect statement coming up. Neptune sensed that the water was being mixed with a great murmur. This is the passive infinitive of miscere miscere. And he also sensed that a storm had been sent. So there's an essay fail here. And continuing the indirect statement, and he sensed that the still waters had been poured back into the shallows. So here's another essay fail. Um, he um, seriously moved, commotious. And looking about, and I need one of you guys to do this, we'll do this on Wednesday, and looking about from the depths he lifts his peaceful head. He lifts his peaceful head out onto the height of the water. So now Neptune is popping up out of the water. Okay, let's stop there, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday.